Hi, Leslie. It's really good to see you today. How are you? Uh, wonderful, Lynn. It's great to be with you today. You know, you've been doing this work for a very long time with helping companies and organizations move beyond their current culture. Let's start with what kinds of conversations have you been having with companies over these past several months? It's been amazing from one, don't know what to do. How do we do it? What is it that we're doing? What direction do we go in? Or others that are, how do we, how do we really build on what we have um, without adding newness, but making what we're doing stronger? So I have some people that have been doing the work and just want to make sure the work is strong and others that just feel like they need to jump in the pond and start swimming. I know you've done a few presentations on power, pause, and privilege. Tell us about what you talk about. What does that mean? You know, privilege is such a polarizing word. I never knew that or realized that. I think when most whites hear privilege, they think of money. And this is not about money. You have the privilege of um, leadership. You have the privilege of making policy. And that's, that's across any color line or culture line. You have the power to make the change. But most of all, you also have the privilege and the power to take a pause to really make impactful change and sustainable change. Everyone came through the gate ready to run. What do we do? George Floyd was murdered. We have to do something. And I'm like, slow down. Take a pause. What makes sense for your company, for your company culture, for the growth? You have the power to make the change. You have the privilege to take that moment to pause, not too long, notice I said a moment, to pause and figure out what's the best thing to do. I've heard you talk a lot, and I think we know this in the age of the expectation of companies being accountable and transparent, that their insides have to match their outsides. We hear sometimes a lot of voices and their words, and I said in my opening remarks, words matter, and money and financial commitments are important, but that's just getting out of the gate for the hard work that has to follow. So talk about that. When there's a, a mismatch between what's going on internally to a corporate culture and what they're projecting to the external world. I mean, so many companies, unfortunately, their outsides may look great. Their employees will have something else to say. Their company culture is weak. So if you're running around putting out statements and putting out black boxes and celebrating Juneteenth and have no one of culture or very few people of culture in that company, yet you're trying to sell to a place that you don't recognize, you're mix matching. You can write all the checks you want, but inside people aren't getting promoted. They don't know how and you have very little diversity, um, diversity of thought, diversity of people. This is bigger than just black and white. This is understanding that you need to build a diverse um, company that can better suit you to assure that your outsides are matching your, your insides. And that's the only way you can do that is not only if you have diversity inside, but diversity of thought and diversity of voices allowed to happen. And I say allowed to happen because so many people get so excited about bringing people in. You know, that was the checkbox. Higher, higher, higher blacks, higher black, higher. Well, if you bring them into an organization that's not prepared for a cultural difference, then what are you doing? It's a setup. Your outsides and insides still don't match. So that goes back to that power pause privilege that you understand why you're bringing someone in, that you understand the programs that you are trying to create, or you understand the organization that you're cutting a check to. So, um, Let's talk about something that's near and dear to your heart. You have a new book coming out soon called Expanding Beyond Your Current Culture. And I had the privilege of reading uh, a preview of one of the chapters, mm -hmm. chapter eight, called Nothing About Us Without Us. There's an executive from the auto industry who said, no policy should be decided by any representative without the participation of members of the group affected by that policy. Talk to us about nothing about us without us. Sounds so simple, doesn't it? <laughs> if you're going to branch outside of your current culture,
structure. And if you're going to be working with, whether it's communities or employees or programs that don't look like you, sound like you, or walk like you, then you need to have the people in the room that has a valid voice that looks like the community that you're trying to um, sell to, um, promote to, hire. Because if you don't have the people in the room, you're assuming that you know what they want instead of what they need that will benefit, again, what you're trying to do. Look at all of the mistakes that's been happening I mean, in regards to advertising. Why do companies keep making the same mistakes? At some point, it's no longer a mistake. But if you had the right people in the room speaking the language, understanding the culture for which you're trying to reach, you at least would be ahead of the game. Stop assuming you know what's best for someone else's culture. Just because it's a pen doesn't mean you can market it the same way in every community. This is why I love talking to you. Um, so we're in a very consequential moment in time. Yes. If you could, because our audience is, is made up of people that work from all different companies and all different um, divisions and departments, different aspects, what would be the one or two things you really want people to know as we are navigating this movement for racial and economic justice? I think it starts off with nothing about us without us. So again, um, take the time to do your research. Stop assuming you know what's best and ask what is needed. You know, so, so many people were running to do something. That was the guilt of not maybe having done something before or haven't done enough. Before you run in, ask what is needed. One, two, also evaluate your added value to a situation. What are you really bringing? If it's a check and that's it, that's cool. I'm sure there's a lot of organizations that would be happy to have that check. But if you're committed to making systemic changes, then what's your added value along this journey to do that? And again, look inside your organization and make sure it's happening there as you also build your outside. And then the shameless plug is, of course, get the book. I give it to you step by step what's to do and how we see if you're not doing it the right way and steps and processes to help you understand why this is important. Diversity and inclusion and, and being on the right side of justice is not, shouldn't be an add on to your company. It should be part of the foundation of your company. I have one final question for you. And that is, you've been doing this work for a long time, and it's the hard work. And I know it's the hard work. <laughs> what gives you hope? And why is this moment maybe different than what's gone before? I'll start with the moment. The moment is different because we are in the middle of a pandemic. This is something that's not a state issue. It's a world issue. And for the first time, everyone was, um, I hate to say locked down, but they were, you know, in a enforced home vacation and they had no option but to look up. And though having a black man killed by a white man or by an officer has all, is not new, but it, you could see it on video. You could look in people's faces and you saw the unjust. And you really took a moment to look at yourself, hopefully, and then look at your situation around you and knew that this, if this change was now, if not now, then when? And so I am hopeful because I do see changes. And when I post, I go inch by inch because I need to take every win to continue to fight and do this work. So every time I see a new change, it gives me hope. And the work that you do and our conversations give me hope. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for you being with us today. And we'll look forward to many more conversations as we move forward in this most interesting and difficult time. Thank you. And thank you for having um, the space to open up these conversations. It's important. Thank you.